time for your Monday market moment. I'm going to focus on Cathedral City today. Cathedral City is just to the east of Palm Springs, and it's often where people choose to live for great value, easy access to Palm Springs, and um, kind of a dynamite little downtown. So as I like to do, I'm going to share my screen. While I'm doing that, I'm going to remind you, my name is Jason Allen. I am a realtor and real estate planner based in Palm Springs. I do these on a weekly basis, focusing on different cities within the desert each week. And it's primarily the four cities that I focus on. So Palm Springs, Cathedral City, Rancho Mirage, and Palm Desert. Although I do go as far east as Indian Wells. I've also gone uh, over 2,000 Palms and Desert Hot Springs. So happy to assist you. It's just I tend to focus on these specific markets. So as I like to do, I start with these statistics. And this is provided to us by Desert Dynamics. This is a company that uh, my realtor association, California Desert Association of Realtors, has partnered with. These are unique statistics to our MLS agents. So let me start with unit sales. And I'm focused first on single family dwellings and I'll cut over to condos in a moment. But single family dwellings, we had 17 units sell. That's down compared to September of 22. All these statistics in this frame compare the most recent month that ended this year with the one previously. So median sales price is down 7.2 compared to last September. Uh, median, once again, is the house in the middle, the price in the middle. So half of the homes sold above that, half of the homes sold before that, below that, excuse me. Inventory is down. So that reduced inventory actually puts pressure on prices to keep them buoyed, keep them up. Fewer people are, fewer houses are available for people to choose from. Uh, days on market has gone up. And uh, sales to list price at about 98%. That's actually very good. And now it's an average. I'm going to show you another chart, which I don't normally show you, but it'll speak to why averages are very difficult to use as a barometer. We show them. It helps some. Um, it has to be taken in context. And these are homes at 97.9 that sold within, uh, or sold without a price reduction. This 97.3% is uh, a reflection of houses that have had at least one price reduction. People are still getting close to what they're asking for their houses. And that, again, we go back to averages, is because we have 47.1 of the homes going above asking price. Month supply of inventory is at about three. Median sales price per square foot is down. And again, median, not average. Um, homes that have sold within uh, 30 days, uh, there are 35% of those whole homes that sold within 60 days, 71%. Homes that sold within 90 days, 82%. Obviously, the those over that are going on for much longer. Let me jump over to condos since I know some are interested in condos that are buying into this market because it's a lower price point. And then, of course, I have clients that have a condo they may want to sell. Unit sales is the same this year versus last year. Median sales price is up 7.7%. Inventory is up. Sales to list price 73.1. So these are folks that did not get a price reduction again. And then those that have had at least one price reduction are getting basically 95, 96% of what they were asking. 60% are over list price. At or above list price. I, I should qualify that. At or above list price. But there's a good portion of those that are going over. Month supply three. Median sales price per square foot is actually up. And then sold within the first 90 days, 40%. Those within the first 60 days, 60%. 90 days, 80%. The additional 20 may still be on the market. Why, let me just first address a what. Why are condos doing so well compared to houses, which are actually holding their own, but not great? Because as we've seen interest rates go up, people can afford less 
property. They can afford to borrow less. So condos naturally are a little bit less from a price point and offer a great alternative. So we're seeing buyers move from one market, single family dwellings, into condos. And I bring this up because we definitely have people on the sidelines just waiting for interest rates to come down. And for those of you that are on the fence and maybe really want a single family dwelling, but want to wait till rates come down, you're probably better off buying today or in the very near future and then refinancing a year or two later. Why? Because this is a direct result of more buyers in a limited market. And so median sales price per square foot goes up, month's supply of inventory stays very low, and your median sales price goes up. So I, I try and I try and explain this to folks on on the regular <laughs> because it's truly supply and demand. Now, it's also very particular to market segments. I have three additional charts here. Let me see which one comes up first. Okay, so we're going to look at month comparison, September of 23. If you look at the current year versus previous year, and they break this into what changes favor the sellers, what changes favor buyers. This is focused on single family dwelling initially. Average list price in the current year, 658 versus previous year of 592. That's an 11% increase. Inventory is down this year versus last year. That also favors sellers. Days on market has gone down. Sales price has basically stayed the same. Average list price is this, and then they're getting most of that. New listings coming to the market is significantly fewer. Sidebar, that happens because if you own a house and you're thinking of buying a bigger house or a smaller house, or maybe moving to a different neighborhood because your kids go to a, a new school, you feel locked in because you also don't want to spend more on a mortgage. And so we're going to continue to see inventory stay limited. What changes are favoring buyers in Cathedral City single family dwellings? Unit sales are down. So there are fewer people making purchases. The average average sales price is down. Median sales price is down. Month supply of inventory is going up. And the average sales price per square foot appears to be going down. Now, and then pending is roughly the same. Let me go over to condos. Average sales price, higher. Median sales price, higher. Average list price, higher. Average sales price per square foot, higher. If we go into inventory, inventory has gone up. Month supply of inventory has gone up dramatically. So that's very helpful to buyer, more to choose from. Days on market has gone is longer, so you may have more time to make a decision on a condo. And there are a couple more listings. This chart it, it is particularly telling to me. So this is, we have a single family and we have it as condos. And what this does is it breaks them up into $50,000 increments. So the 300 to 349,000 zone. Look at what's been absorbed and what's available. And so we see this in this sweet spot in here where there are very few homes available. And so these are the ones, these influence the averages pushing the numbers higher. Now, if you wanted to buy an eight, plus $100,000 home in Cathedral City, you don't have a lot to choose from, but you've got 12 months supply of inventory there. And, and the absorption rate is fairly low. That's a very high-end home in Cathedral City. There are a few gated communities where that makes sense. Go over to this chart. And now we get very granular. This is listing all of the single families that have sold 
And you can see where, in fact, the list price was and the sale price was. List price, sale price, list price. So these two lower, this one at, this one lower, this one lower, this one lower. This one somewhat significantly lower. I'd be curious to understand why. Clearly, it was on the market a long time. Interesting. But then you look at this one, was on the market a very long time, and the price held. Um, this one was a small discount. One day on the market at asking. This one on the market not too long. Took a slight trim. That may have actually been as part of negotiated repairs. Seller gave a credit for some repairs that were necessary. You can see, though, as we get into these, you get very specific. This one, in fact, went for more than the asking price. Same, a little bit less, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. And then if we go over to condos, not a lot of sales, some discounting, but not a whole lot. And I show this chart, this last chart, largely so that people understand that we can talk about median, we can talk about average. Median is in the middle. We don't, and we know what half went above, half went below. Average use our understanding considerably and that each transaction is very specific. That's where a professional like me or your realtor of choice has, has influence on explaining to you like, gee, I know that the, the listing agent has told me there are two other offers coming in. Very likely that property is going to sell at or above asking price. Or we've had no offers in the last four months that we've been on the market, but the seller is committed to this number. Okay, how do we make this work in some other way? Maybe the buyer can buy all the furniture too. That makes it easier for the seller. Or the buyer says, I'll take it with all the old furniture and I'll take care of disposing of it. The other aspects of a deal start to come together to make it happen. But I can tell you the biggest mistake that people paying with cash are making is assuming that all sellers are desperate, offering an, a ridiculously low number, and then alienating the seller such that they don't want to do business with that particular buyer. Um, there's a lot of value in the market right now, despite the fact that we have higher interest rates. But as you can see, those interest rates and the, the lack of a lot of buyers in the market are putting a downward pressure on price. If you're thinking about buying, this is a better time to do it than waiting till interest rates go down. If you're a seller, you simply have to get realistic about what you're offering. If your home needs work, if it doesn't present well, if it's filled with, unfortunately, grandma's old furniture and it's a bit battered and worn, buyers are looking elsewhere. Or they're going to come back and offer you significantly less than what you're looking to uh, receive for the property. So that's it. That's my take on Cathedral City's market. There's some overlays to other markets in our um, area. I'm happy to have this personal conversation with you and try and find the solution that meets your needs. That's all I've got today. Enjoy your week. 